So now we're going to look at uh, what we call communities. So a community, and we're going to go over here. See, this is where we are now. Where I talked about populations. Uh, a community is um, multiple species of organisms living in the same place at the same time. So it's an assemblage. species who live together and we'll get into you know how they interact with each each other sometimes they uh, don't interact with each other they just happen to live in the same area sometimes they're directly competing with one another sometimes one is a predator and one's a prey organism sometimes they complement one another one organism helps the other organism so there's all sorts of relationships that happen within the community. And that's one of the things we're gonna to get to. That's what we're gonna to get to in the second part of this. Uh, so in this first part, we're gonna look at, um, as organisms live together, how does it affect some of the things with populations that we just talked about? Uh, and then what are some of the, the terms that we use to categorize uh, and classify different species? Okay, so, uh, or in different communities, the, the things within the community. So when we look at a community, one of the things that we will talk about or try to define is the composition of a community. So the composition uh, is essentially just a list of the species. So down here, uh, let's say these are let's say these are two separate environments. Okay, or two separate um, areas that we're comparing the communities between. Using this one. Um, and what we have here is if we were to count, let's say we have uh, the grass as one species, uh, this orange flower as a second species, and this pink flower uh, as a third species. If we come over here into this uh, little group, we have the grass again, we have the yellow or orange flower again. We have the pink flower again, and this time we have a blue flower. So this time, this one has here just, there's three different uh, species of organisms. This one has four different species of organisms. We can see they still look different beyond that. So this one has uh, a little bit greater species composition. So what we would start to call that is if we compare the numbers, uh, we call that richness. So we actually have the, just the total number of species, especially when we're using this to compare. Just alone, just a number, it's just a number. It's just, that's how many species are there. Richness is really referring then to something else. Like this environment has a greater species, species richness than that particular uh, habitat because of whatever, some reason that you might be studying um, that you might be looking into. Why? You know, why does one have a, a greater richness than the other? But beyond that, we also have what we call species diversity. And they all seem to be about the same, you know, in terms of de definition, but there are these slight differences. So composition, just names. Just these are the names of the organisms that live in that area. So if I took with the blue one away here, for example, they would each have, you know, three species. So I just list the species and the richness would then technically be the same. Okay. If diversity uh, is where we have the richness plus we're considering uh, the population density of each of the species. So in this particular uh, environment over here, we see it's mostly the green grass. We have two species of flower, but in this particular drawing I have, there's just, there's like one of each and that's it. And over here, I have drawn several of each of those flowers in addition to the grass and some other species. So overall, because of the number of the species, not just the number of, the number of individuals within each species. So number of individuals, say per species, is then included. So say one, say here for the pink one versus three, you know, so it's greater 
numbers. And then here for the, the orange one, there's there's four of those again versus one. So overall, this one has greater diversity because you're also more likely to find these. If you were to just sample little bits. So we talked about uh, I mentioned my quadrant sampling before. So let's say you just were sampling this area and we sampled like the same area here. You know, here we would just see the grass, but here we would see the grass plus, you know, this blue flower. You know, again, here, if we just sampled this little area. Here we would sample and we'd say, oh, there's the grass plus the orange flower, and we may pick up the the um, pink flower here. So we might start to, our sampling technique would lead to revealing greater diversity because we aren't going to be able to count you know, every single individual of every species within a certain area. The sampling techniques in a more diverse area is going to reveal more of the richness. In an area that isn't quite uh, as diverse, meaning they don't have as many of the different organisms that live there. They might have someone live there, but they might be missed, say, because their numbers are so low. So again, they generally are referring to something very similar. It's kind of like the numbers of species that live in a particular area. Is it only like one species? And that's it that kind of lives there. There are multiple species. And then we have to consider next, of the organisms who live there, are they both equally abundant? Is it pretty much just one organism and just a couple individuals of the other species? How do the numbers then compare. So that's what we're really talking about when we get into diversity. Uh, we're including the number of individuals and the number of species kind of together. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. So now what we're talking about then is, you know, organisms in a uh, particular habitat. So that's what we're looking at here. And, and so these habitats, you know, are just the place where the organism lives, uh, the place where they reproduce, is the place where they spend their time. So some organisms are sedentary they pretty much just they're fixed in one particular place they're not moving so the tree is just fixed here uh these little i'm trying to draw little birds here you know so the birds can kind of come and go but generally they might stay within a certain area depending again on the species some have a very uh, a vast area that they're going to cover and others are kind of more uh, local they're going to stay around one particular place uh, usually for a particular time so that would be the habitat the next thing we often talk about uh, when we talk about uh, organisms in a particular community is their niche. Sometimes people say niche, right? But I can call, I call it uh, the niche. Uh, so we spell N-I-C-H-E. Uh, and for the, the niche, well, what, so what is it? Um, it's really the role kind of of the species in the community. And it's it's a number of things. It's sort of like the area, you know, of the habitat that they occupy and what they kind of do, how they interact with the other organisms. Are they a consumer? Um, are they something that's decomposing? Are they a producer? So what is their role in that habitat? And then what niche, what part of that do they actually occupy? You know, sort of like physically. Uh, now, what we're going to find is that for many organisms, they're going to have their niche kind of split right, into two theoretical uh, concepts. All right, one is the fundamental niche, and then there's the realized. So a fundamental niche is w w what we have is the potential area, you know, and role of the species in that population or in that habitat. Sorry. Uh, so within that particular habitat, this is the role that this organism can play. This is all the space it potentially can occupy because it, you know, it grows in the soil. And so it can potentially grow in, you know, all the areas of the soil. But we find that it's it's not. It's not growing everywhere because of other reasons. So there might be, it might be, the, we'll get into competition reasons or other environmental reasons, or there's other reasons why it doesn't quite occupy all the potential fundamental niche that it could. Uh, so it then has a realized niche. It's kind of what it actually occupies. So, for example here, and we're going to 
kind of mix some of these things together um, as we talk about it. This will introduce this first here. Let's say this is, this is a particular tree, has little berries on it, and there are birds that live in this area and they eat the berries. And all the birds are different species, okay, but they all eat the same berries, which means there's then going to be competition. Right, so we're going to get into it's going to be competition between the birds. And if they were all trying to feed on all the berries of the whole entire tree at the same time, then you know some of them are going to win, some of them are going to lose, and some of them are going to be more successful, and some of them won't. Some of them might be driven out. There's all kinds of things that could happen. In my particular drawing, what I'm, what I'm showing here is that I kind of have this blue bird at the top, and I kind of have this orange bird in the middle here, and this purple bird toward the bottom. And what's happened here is now they have kind of narrowed their realized niches right, as consumers of these berries within this particular habitat to not just this tree, but regions of the tree. Right? So this species up here, a bird, when it comes to feed on the tree, it's only coming to the top of the trees kind of lands right at the top, it feeds up in the top part of the tree. It doesn't really overlap then with this other bird who's in the middle. May overlap a little bit, but very little. Uh, and uh, this purple one, they don't interact at all. They stay away from each other. So even though they're two different species of bird, they're feeding on the same tree, they feed on the same type of berry, they are not interacting with one another. The orange one may interact with kind of with both, so maybe it has a little more pressure, you know, than uh, than each of the, these others. But it, it again kind of takes into the middle of the tree, the center of the tree, and the others don't overlap with it. So what is that really all about? I mean, obviously this is about the niches that they occupy within the community and how that there's multiple organisms. They might be competing then for the same resources, and so then certain some things are going to happen. All right. So here here's our kind of explanation of this. Let's say this is one organism and its population growth curve, like what we talked about before. Right? And it's just alone in a habitat. There's nothing else there. It's just that organism. Organism or species A. Species B, a different organism, very, very similar, uses all the same resources, needs all the same things. It's living in a similar habitat. It does just fine. It has a sim like similar, slightly different shaped growth curve, but basically the same. It kind of goes up. There's like a logarithmic growth, and then it kind of is leveling off. Now, if we take these two different species of organisms who essentially occupy the same niche in their communities, but we put them together in the same community, we then see competition between them. And in this particular example, you can see the species A does better. All right, it essentially outcompetes the species B. Species B starts to do well, but as the species A population starts to increase, it continues. It doesn't do quite as well because it's not getting as much of the resources because B is taking some away. Uh, but B doesn't really do too well. It kind of levels off very early on, um, and, and its population is kept very low because it can't quite compete with the other. This is called here uh, a competitive exclusion principle, right? So that two species who occupy the same niche cannot overlap. All right, so if, we, if they try to overlap, there's going to be competition between them, and, and typically one is going to win and the other is going to lose. There is, however, alternate an alternative to that. And that is what we see here. This particular example is showing what we call resource partitioning. In resource partitioning, the organisms then just occupy slightly different, more specific, narrow, niches within that particular habitat. All right, so like I said, so the, this purple one here, this bird, it's only occupying this lower part of the tree. The blue one's only the top part of the tree. They're partitioning. They're separating the resources into zones of some sort. You know, so I'm only going to take this side of it and you take the other side and then we'll just, you know, we won't fight with one another. We'll just kind of 
be successful on our own because there's enough resources if we partition it that way. So not that they're going to have that discussion, but that's kind of the idea that over time through perhaps competition and behavior with the organisms just by avoiding others um, and avoiding fighting and competition, that they just essentially partition themselves you know, in terms of their behavior. So that's something that's going to happen um, within uh, communities. You, you also get, um, you know, so we can also get, uh, so I talked about the specialization. So that's also called niche specialization. Where then, because of partitioning, the organism's niche has become more narrow, you know, and or specialized. As this is occurring, right, what's going to be happening is, like I said, competition, though, between the organisms. And that competition is going to then drive the organisms potentially to even change. Right? And so that's kind of the running out of space without kind of um, erase, wasting time to erase things. So we'll just kind of uh, stop this here and then I'm going to be moving on to competition uh, specifically and other sorts of interactions like predation parasitism. So what are the other kinds of interactions that the different species have within a community? That's what we'll be looking at.